It's a scent, Nigeria. That means hello, Nigeria and tree. Hi, my name is Amanda Potelwa. I'm from South Africa. Hello, my name is Mimi Akin Kube. Hello, my name is Candace Nkotgisek. I'm from Cameroon. My name is Idoe Nanang. My name is Ifo Ose. And the most interesting thing I found about Nigeria is the extraordinary hustling energy. And make sure you keep watching. Hello, Nigeria. We do it all for you. We do it all for you. Welcome back. Thank you very much for that news update. Our second guest is here with us in the studio, a young, inspiring, innovative man. He is a PR expert and the founder slash CEO of Media Panache Nigeria, a fast-rising tech and digital-driven public relations agency dedicated to finessing innovative PR approaches and creative ideas to astound their clients. He won the 2017 Future Awards for Media Enterprise. He's a promising young man and definitely one to look out for. Our guest today is Timile. Him. Timmy Lane, Bilu. Thank you so much for joining us Big today. Timmy! Big Timmy! <laughs> How are you? I'm great, I'm so great. So great to have you on the uh, show. Same year, same year. <laughs> I think the first thing, people always see you and Kwede Bilu. And your surname is Timile in Belo. And both of you look alike. And both of you have this bromance going on on social media, taking pictures and posting together. It's quite a bit of a And both of you are, are, little vampi are, are little vampires. Exactly. You don't, you don't grow old. You we have the same look old, like, for really. many years. <laughs> so are you related to Kwede Belo? Yeah, we're related. You know, we're related. We're How? adopted brothers. <laughs> okay, okay that, that, that's fair enough. <laughs> I didn't find a story for that one. But I mean, yeah. welcome. They say that um, great things come in, not so great. I mean, your size is not what you are capable of doing. So, mm. well done. Let me we'll see you. That big to me was prophetic. So, it was like, don't look at me the way I am now. Because, obviously, you're you've right. chopped up. You've chopped up monetarily, and you've chopped up, you know. How did you know that? We <laughs> can see. You, you are paying how many people. Start. In fact, we'll get to the gist. Let's even start from the very beginning. Okay. Rumor has it that you started your company via WhatsApp. So, tell us the story of how you started your company. Okay, so how I started Media Panache is, um, you know, there was no money when I, when I, when I, when I resigned. And, um, I resigned from where? I resigned from another PR firm where, okay. where I used to work. So I worked there for two years and I felt fulfilled and I felt like I should go and start my own company, you know. So, um, but there was no money to start. So I felt like I needed to start this dream, this vision. And uh, something just came to me. I don't know whether it was a prophetic word or a dream or something. Something just came to my mind and said, Open the WhatsApp group. Open the WhatsApp group. And yeah, I opened the WhatsApp group and I added like a few of my friends. A um, few of my friends that actually share the same um, vision, about four of them. And we opened that. And after opening the WhatsApp group, then we started, you know, we also for jobs. I started begging for jobs. Please, if you have any company, you know, I beg. You know, just give me something, you know, stuff like that. I, I just opened my, my company and stuff. And, um, and luckily for me, I had some friends, you know, in my, in my circle, you know, that actually helped out and they got me some jobs. And we executed the jobs while still on WhatsApp. So we did like a whole lot of jobs like that, you know, while still having the WhatsApp when they were quite excellent and um we were able to start getting small 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 also so <laughs> small, small cash. So small cash from that and um you know and we we're able to actually get an office space, you know, stuff like that. So but everything started from WhatsApp, you know, so we had to just have a WhatsApp office. You know, where we're communicating, where we're dropping information, you know, where we're exchanging ideas and executing them outside, you know, the WhatsApp group and stuff. And you know, that's how I started really on the WhatsApp group. That's how the WhatsApp thing came about. That's it. I mean, it's brilliant. First of all, kudos to you. Not many people will resign a job in Nigeria at the moment <laughs> without another job offer standing by. What gave you that courage to leave where you were? I'm glad you said you had two years, you'd given your best mm -hmm. to that organization, you felt fulfilled, and you knew it was time to move on. Now, there are many people who are stuck in a job they don't like or not that they don't like, but they've grown beyond the job and they feel that it's time to move on. But they're still, you know, dilly-dallying and waiting. What, what would you, how did you make that decision? What gave you that courage to do that? Well, it wasn't a very easy decision. Like, it's not as easy as I'm saying it right now. You know, saying, <laughs> I can uh, imagine. Yes. It wasn't as easy as I'm saying right now because I had to call, like, almost more than 15 people or 20 people to ask them, please, can I really start the company? <laughs> and they are like, just give me your honest, honest you know, opinion and stuff, and um, I got, How was the feedback you got? Yeah, I got some feedback, you know, I got very nice feedback, you know, for example, some, some said that I shouldn't even dare it, for example, mm -hmm. Korea said I shouldn't even dare it, you know, said I shouldn't even try it to start a company and stuff, you know, but um, I had more people who said, oh, yeah, go, two things will happen, is that you fail, 
and it's that you succeed. Mm. And if you if you if you fail, you get up and try again. If you succeed, you're a superstar. You know, so I had those feedback, and um, you know, for me, living, you know, is fulfillment. You know, I, I think that where I worked, I, I found um, joy. You know, I was happy doing what I what I was doing. You know, so I enjoyed what I was doing. So while living, I felt fulfilled. I, I didn't feel like maybe it was going to be all that bad. You know, most of the time, people don't give themselves for the work. You know, so people don't do it. That's the honest. Let's be honest with ourselves. Nigerians don't want to work so hard. You know, they have this mindset of, I beg, it's not my company. I cannot come and kill myself. Yeah. You know, so I tell people that you have to raise that kind of mindset, you know, and work because whatever you're doing for this company, you build a company, you're also building yourself in return. You know, so I feel like I actually did that. I actually served selflessly and that gave me the old ginger to you start know, yours. To start my own I, I learned something from what you said, or I'm reminded again of something from what you said. It's important that you not be a party to being someone's dream killer. Now, many people will share ideas with you. It's important to be careful of the kind of feedback you've given them. At mm -hmm. the end of the day, those people have become a reference point. Now you've said, oh, Corey told you not to start a company. A couple of them like, oh, this person told me not to start. But you started anyway. And those who encourage you to start to be like the, they're, they're the ones who be the cheerleaders. Like, oh, this person encouraged me, that person encouraged me. So whilst you're out there wanting to give honest feedback to someone, be careful not to be a dream killer so that they don't use you as lesson. But they're not dream killers, really. Or dream, that, they could that, propel they're just honest people for you who realistic. don't want you to fail. Yes. Because they've seen that you're doing well wherever you are. And if you're going to start something else, this thing might kill you. And because they love you, and because they care about you, they say, ah, don't even start. Don't, don't, don't go and kill the character. So they're not dream killers. They're, they're more like, they, they're just trying to be honest. You but know, successful you know. <laughs> people are the ones who would agree to but take But you, 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 you also have to be daring. Yeah, yes. honestly, Do at the understand? end of the day, it's always down to you. It's down to because me. even sometimes your parents are the ones that will tell you, just hold on to what mm -hmm. you have. Don't bother venturing in. It's not because they hate you. But the truth is that only you, only you knows the dream that you have and that you believe in. You're, you're your first cheerleader. True. Forget another thing. You're your first cheerleader. You're your first encourager. You're the first person that will pat yourself <laughs> on the back. Now, something else that happens a lot in Nigeria is that you left an organization to start your own with doing something quite similar. Mm. What's the, what was the relationship like with your previous boss? And what was how did you manage that relationship? I don't know what it is at the moment, but how did you manage it in such a way that they won't feel that, oh, you know, feel that jealousy or feel that, you know, um, as if you slighted them? So I, I, I think the thing I would tell people is that you also need to build like a, a very good relationship with your employer. You don't have to live on a bad note. You have to live in a good way. You know, and, and because people also are not that ungrateful, they also have to be grateful for the job that you've done and stuff. And um, for me, you know, I had this good relationship with my boss, with my former boss, and he has been of assistance all the way after the media panache. Like, he helps me out in every way, in terms of rescuing me from any trouble, helping me get the right certification and stuff. He has been the one calling me, telling me that, oh, Timmy, you need to get a certification, oh, Timmy, you need to do that and that. And that's because of the kind of relationship I kept with him. And even starting, you know, he has never for seen me as a threat. You know, he even told me all the time that guy, you are the future. You are the, you know, you are the, you know, and stuff. And he, and he helps me out in every way. Oh, do you need money? If I, it wasn't even giving me money. I do you need money to get some special. Don't worry, I'll pay for it. You know, stuff like that. Oh, you want to get an office space? I will, I will assist you. You know, so you also have to learn to keep a good relationship with people. Good. You know, don't fight with them. Don't go and quarrel and say, I beg, I come on your, <laughs> I they come on your office. You know, stuff like that. You know, so um, for me, I had a beautiful relationship and. I don't think they see me as a threat and because most of the guys that are there are still my friends and when they see my successes and achievements, they call me and say, guy, we're proud of you and stuff. So it's like a family that is just spreading around. And because we all have a common goal, we're all trying to democratize PR, trying to ensure that you know PR is respected, that PR, everyone knows PR, even if you're you're poor, you're middle class, you're rich and stuff, just understand what PR is all about. You know, so we have a common goal and we're all working towards you know, helping people and their businesses. I will come and talk about this common goal, but I like how you're steady dropping nuggets of wisdom, <laughs> talking about people, you know, having good working relationship with their yeah. employers. And more importantly, employers should also realize that this sky is large enough for all of us all to of fly. Us to you don't fly, need to yeah. dim someone else's light for yours to shine. The more this you're shining someone else's light, the more yours is shining brighter. Like your boss now, you go on other platforms and you're speaking positively of him because he has allowed you shine and he has helped you shine. Now let's talk about this goal of PR that you're talking about. When people hear of PR, public relations, people are thinking, no, I'm still a small brand. It's like big companies that need PR. Why is PR important and who really needs PR? I, I think everyone needs PR. You know, the reason why I'm dressed this way 
you know, is because I want to position myself as a brand and I want to be seen somehow, you know, in a certain way. So everyone needs PR, no matter how little you are. You know, you need that, you need that um, public perception about you. And, you need, and PR is not even just perception alone. PR is also, the, is also having the right relationship with people. So everywhere you go, you have the right relationship. If, if I'm a woman and I sell bully, and people don't like me, and everybody's saying that that bully woman is a wicked woman, that's, that's bad PR for me. So I need to ensure that people will say that, oh, if you want the best bully in town, stop by at that junction. I meet that woman, she's amazing. She will just with you while she's trying to find the bully and stuff. So everyone is PR, whether, whether you're a small business, whether you're a big business. So everyone, even if you're an individual, you know, you actually need PR. You actually have to be seen in a, in a, very, in a very good way. You know, so PR is just trying to create that good perception about your brand, you know, no matter how small. I know, I know some people that, that will tell you, oh, don't buy rice in that woman's face because that woman doesn't even know how to talk to people. She doesn't even know how to address people. She just talks anyhow and sell with so much hatred and stuff like that. And before you know, people, she will start losing customer. So how about informing that woman that this is what you should do, this is how you should package yourself, these are the things you should do, you know, go this way, go that way, you know, do stuff like that. And so no matter how little, you actually need PR. <laughs> I'm really glad you said that. And, um, you know, like Olive mentioned, the importance is not very obvious for many Nigerians at the moment. But like you said, every single person at different levels of their businesses need PR. And let's talk about the PR professional. Nowadays, we've seen it's become quite popular. Many mm -hmm. people are going into public relations. What, what are the marks of a true PR professional? Someone, why would I want to give you as my PR professional my business? What are some of the qualities that makes you stand out? Okay, so I think um, to be a good, for a good PR um, person, you know, PR person is someone that just have like a broad mindset about everything, everything actually, you know, a PR, a, a PR person is someone that knows, that knows about your industry, you know. So I, I, I'm not just focused on one industry. I know about everybody. I, I know the, I know the way to go. Let me just put it that way. So the APR person knows the way to go. Understands people's mindsets. Understands the trends that's happening with people. So people used to think like this before in 1999, and in 2000 they think the thoughts changed and they think this way. In 2016, everybody has not turned to Kakusha children and all those things. <laughs> so you need to understand. So APR person understands people as they move, as they transcend, and they actually help you, you know, place your brand rightly. With, with people as, 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 they, as they change, because now the world is about change, so people change easily, mm -hmm. you know. So a PR person is just someone that, un, that perfectly understands people and can help you create that right synergy, you know. So that's, that, that's the basic uh, thing about a PR. And they must actually understand the things that make that work. And what makes that work is you must also understand that you have, to, you have to be a friend with the media, you know, for more exposure. You also have to um, know how to write very, very well. You know, you also have to... Um, have good communication skills, people skills, because if you don't have people skills, then there's no way you can actually help people to create the right synergy with people. So you must have a, uh, you must have a, a very, uh, let me say, excellent people skills, you know, and um, you must know about everything, you know, trends, social media. So basically keep up. Like keep up, you know, so you must be like that guy that is on point, that is in town, that knows everything and everything about everything. Right. <laughs> but even if you don't know the thing, you know someone that knows the thing where you, you can find out the information you can find out. The then because social media is one of the in thing right now, you must actually be very, very good with social media. You must understand the trends that people are following on social media. You know, in terms of reaching millennials, you must know where and how to reach millennials, you know, and stuff. So it's, it's really a big, it's, okay. it's, a, it's very broad, you know, publication is very broad. And you must know actually everything about each section. You've spoken about um, public relations being about painting your brand in a positive light. Now, there's a phrase I've come across a lot of times. They say, every publicity is good publicity. And sometimes we find that some people intentionally manufacture bad news so that they can trend. We've seen the case of Skibi faking his own death and how it's backfired against him. And for some people, they say, oh, the brand Did like... Did really backfire, though? It made him more popular, yes. I was going to say... Because nobody knew was, who Skibi was before Was his then. aim but achieved? Social, yes, he was, but not quite in the way he perceived that it would be received. You know, after okay. that, people clamped down on him and told him, that is too serious a matter for you to play with. Okay, away well, from guess Skibi. what? They knew him. At so least, I didn't know him before then, anyway. achieved. So we see people intentionally sparking off rumors, sparking off negative news for them to sell. So really, what is it? Is bad publicity still good publicity at no. the end of the day? Every publicity is not a good publicity, you know, in terms of PR. You have to understand that, for, for example, Skibi, I, I don't think he achieved his aim. You know, the fact that people hear Skibi and they tune up like, that guy that died. Do you understand? It's not, it's not good for you. You know, it's not good for your brand. You've killed your brand right from time. Like, people, no matter people didn't have interest in you, then you now claim, you now pretend that you died. 
and I just don't care. A lot of things distract us, so we really don't bother about you anymore. You know, so for publicity, I think at all times, try to ensure that your brand is in a good way, is in a good light. Don't, PR people are not, we're not propagandists, we're not like people that want to help you. No, we don't like bad publicity, really, because you also have to understand that that good, because you you're trying to spread positive, um, positivity, you know, so you must understand that um, you must make sure that that is your, your core um, focus. focus. Yeah. yeah, so don't, I don't think, I do not agree that every publicity is a good publicity. I don't stand with that. All right, that so you're, uh, you're, I mean, channeling <laughs> positivity, channeling people, bringing out their best side and making people have the best impression of you yes. generally. Yes. All right, beautiful. Now let's, you know, talk about you and your brand. Have you heard anything that like you read about in the papers and you thought, this is not me, this is not me, this is not me, anything, you know, negative? Funny enough, I'm, I'm not really anything. Who wants to scatter this ah. one, boy? <laughs> 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 when you're not wicked, like, what do you want to destroy me? No, the world is a wicked place. <laughs> Very wicked no, place. No, I've, I've not actually heard anything. I've not read anything bad about me. You know, I, I think it has been good so far. How about any of your clients, and how did you manage it? Well, for my clients, I, I don't think that we've, we've, we've had any bad records so far for any of my clients. But I'm going to... I'm not going to say I pray that it's always be like that because yeah. I know that as your career progresses, mm -hmm. yeah. you would actually meet you become the Olivia Pope of some of your clients, yeah, the funny, fixer. Funny enough, we've done we've done some crisis management for some people, you know, for some clients, but they're not really direct clients. It's something that you say, oh, Timmy, can you assist us with putting out this kind of information and stuff? So yeah. the best way to deal with crisis is putting out a counter information or just keeping silent about it. Uh, for for that, you have to understand what the people want to hear. You know, it, it's not just it's not just some some you can keep quiet. You know, in, in terms of maybe celebrity and entertainment people, it's good to keep quiet in terms of crisis, you know. But there's some, there's some that you need to use people, yeah. you know. So you're not the one speaking. People are the ones speaking on your behalf. On your behalf. You know, so most of the time people work. So let people speak on your behalf and talk about it. For example, there was this thing that happened last week and Tony Wapo was trending on Twitter. Yeah, you know, throughout yes. the day and everything. that was what came But you need to check the trend and see people trying to stand for the man. You know, the man was never saying anything. But people were talking for the man. And he was able to manage the whole crisis on it, you know. And... That's it. Okay, we've learned a few <laughs> tricks and um, tips from you. Thank you very much for sharing this with us. Yeah. Before we let you go, you know, we don't want them to be fooled by this, your baby face. <laughs> what is the situation in Media Panel now? So how many staff members do you have? And how, you started two years ago, right? Yeah, so we're like, um, this March, we're celebrating our second year anniversary. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're celebrating our second year anniversary this, this March, and um, we're moving office space. We're trying to move to like, a, to like a bigger building and stuff. We're trying to expand. We're trying to do more of creative PR, more of photos, videos, and stuff. You know, so that's what we're trying to do as well. You know, so we have about, we still have about 10 people. You know, we're trying to also recruit more people. Wow, yeah, so you're paying salaries like this. Yeah. Timmy, how old are you? <laughs> I'm 25. Yeah, 25, and you're paying 10 people's salary. <laughs> hey! A lot of us are going to think about our lives after this interview. Well, thank you so much. For Congratulations. <laughs> thank Congratulations. You, thank well you. done. Thank you. All right, it's been a fabulous and inspiring day here on Hello Nigeria. We've had two in interesting guests, inspiring ones, I must say, Timile Imbelo and uh, Falawe Omikunle, who have inspired us, made us realize that we can't just sit down and do nothing. Having your dream is not enough, but pursuing your dream is it. And the only people that take risks are the only people who end up being successful. So these are our charges and our quotes for you today. We hope that you take them and you run with them. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.